are available in the Linux kernel and not have to rewrite them for a bootloader because we have, uh, we have working drivers for everything in Linux already, so why not try to use them for booting the operating system also? Plus, they're a lot more, uh, they've, they've had a lot more testing and they've been used a lot more, so there are probably uh, less bugs in them as well. The really nice thing is that you can also use a lot more drivers because because Linux uh, has drivers for stuff that isn't already in bootloaders. CD-ROM and hard drive and, and stuff like that, that's the easy part. We've, we've seen a couple of bootloaders mentioned already that implement drivers for, for that hardware. But if you're using Linux as a bootloader, you can use, um, for example, Wi-Fi to boot your system, or you can use Mirinet, or you can use iSCSI, uh, and you don't need anything anything else. You don't need an option ROM. You can use any simple controller card, any simple network, uh, any simple network card, and it will run just fine. Also, because space is a bit tight in the, the boot flash so far, it might be a good idea to have sort of a two-stage startup process. So you have one small Linux kernel running as the bootloader, as the payload, and that kernel can since 2626, I think, start another kernel. So you have the small one running out of Flash, which uh, loads up the iSCSI driver, contacts the, the iSCSI storage, and there is a full-size kernel with all the stuff enabled that you need to run your system. The boot kernel can then hand over execution to the, the full-size kernel, and uh, you have a very, very easy and, and fast way to start up the system. But payloads can be utilities as well. You don't need an operating system all the time, so you can run stuff like Memtest 86 uh, directly from core boot to do memory testing and, and find out uh, if there are some problems. We use that a lot, of course, during development to check that the memory configuration done by core boot has actually uh, succeeded, is actually correct. There's core info, a small utility that we developed also for um, inspecting the PCI bus, inspecting NVRAM contents, and uh, really debugging mostly CPU information and also finding out about the core boots that was, that was built. Linux is up here again, because if you can put a Linux kernel in, in the boot flash, you can add, of course, an init RAM FS. And in that init RAM FS, you're, you're free to, to put whatever utilities you want. So you can say, run secure shell from a remote system into your BIOS, or you could at least have a familiar shell prompt in your firmware environment. Ron Minnick, who, who uh, is, is the guy who started Core Boot, he jokes about open firmware because when open firmware starts up and there's a problem, it will, of course, uh, stop the boot process and it gives you a prompt asking for, for some kind of input. And the prompt says, OK, when in fact the boot has stopped and everything isn't really OK because you want to be in your operating system. And his point there is that if you have a Linux kernel and a small uh, file system, small uh, init RAMFS, in the boot flash, then you're always in your most comfortable environment. You always have access to your shell utilities, your, your shell, um, all your shell tools that you can pack into the, the flash chip. So that's nice. Applications, I mentioned briefly also, we have some fun applications. We've ported a few games to, uh, to run as core boot payloads, a Tetris game, Tint. There's also a Grub Invaders, which, which runs just fine. And but you deserves a special mention because I, I mentioned that there's just one payload, uh, or I mentioned that Corbett starts the payload and there's no way to go back. So there can really be only one payload. But maybe that's not enough. I want I want both Philo and Memtest 86, and I want to play Tint sometimes. So what do I do? I, I have to use Bayou to first pack these uh, different payloads together and then Bayou will be the main payload that I use. So it combines multiple payloads into one and either provides a curses based, uh, a text based menu or it can be scripted to run stuff in sequence automatically. 
Tint and Bayou and Corinfo and Philo uh, and probably some payloads I don't know about are all using libpayload, which is a C library that we developed, really small C library. Uh, it can be used to very easily compile a simple C program that doesn't use any operating system services to become a payload. So instead of running GCC on your C source code, to, uh, to create the Linux binary, you just run LPGCC, which is the, the wrapper script uh, that comes with the payload, and out comes a payload binary instead of um, this, this uh, Linux application. Inside the payload, there's also tiny curses, a uh, curses implementation, so that you can build these uh, uh, text based uh, user interfaces. And the API is compatible with the standard Cursus, in, uh, Cursus API. So you can test stuff running in Linux and then just change the compile command or the build command and have it run as a payload. Some auxiliary tools that we've created during the, the development of, of Coreboot. There's BuildROM. BuildROM is good because uh, there's uh, quite a few things to, to keep track of in Coreboot. There's the Coreboot version, there's uh, which mainboard you're using with Coreboot, there's uh, uh, the payloads, there, the payload might, be, might need to be configured, Coreboot might need to be configured. BuildROM takes care of all of this and you just use one simple kconfig interface, pick a few things, your mainboard, your flash chip size, which payload you want and you let it work for a while, out comes your uh, ROM file which you can flash into your flash chip. Make elf image is um, something we used a lot earlier to make a Linux kernel image into a payload. I believe it's no longer necessary with the latest changes in version 2, but it's still up here because we used it a lot and we, we still keep it in, um, in our repository. NVRAM tool. I mentioned briefly it's for changing NVRAM settings, the battery backed uh, couple hundred bytes of memory which is in your computer. The standard BIOS uses that to save settings as well. And uh, so does Coreboot. NVRAM tool uses a sort of a descriptor file so it can be used to work on standard BIOS settings as well, not only uh, Coreboot and uh, payload, payload settings. Super IO tool, Intel tool, and MSR tool, they're all pretty much debugging utilities for development. Uh, but also, yeah, uh, short troubleshooting and, and finding out why a system isn't working. They, they're really good at decoding all the register values that are in the various chips in uh, PC today. I also want to mention the tool FlashROM, especially. Uh, I've, I've done a bit of work on that. Uh, now I'm not so active there anymore. It's a BIOS upgrade tool for running on uh, uh, x86 BSD and Linux and Solaris and Mac OS X. So you're no longer required to reboot uh, onto this free DOS floppy disk that you have to, to uh, uh, create every time you want to upgrade your BIOS. It supports cross flashing. You can flash one flash chip. Uh, one BIOS image on a flash chip on a mainboard which is different from the mainboard where the, the flash image is going to run or the BIOS image is going to run. Standard BIOS flashing tools from the vendors, they usually don't allow this. Supports hundreds of flash chips and lots of chipsets and the main